This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. PNG's economic status discussed. Road Traffic Authority and Police to Conduct Festive Operations and National Medical and Life Insurance Policy underway. Good evening, this is Tuesday's News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. We are making it hard for ourselves by living beyond our means. Are the words of the president of the Catholic Professional Society of PNG, Paul Harignan, on the current status of PNG's economy and government's conduct. The president expressed that one need not to hear from the country's treasurer or look at renowned global reports to know that the PNG economy is struggling, as ordinary Papua New Guineans are already experiencing the impacts. Mr. Herricknan stressed that an undeniable contributing factor to this is the high cost of expense on public funds. One he highlighted are the constant expensive travels by the government officials. Uh, unnecessary expenses, unnecessary uh, travels, there's huge travels and, uh, and the government is traveling not you know, in, in few numbers, they're traveling in big numbers. And why do we have to? Where is the money? He said that the government can state that such expenses are budgeted for, but if so, why is it that the country lacks funding in the basic services essential to the people, like health? He expressed that PNG continue to posture a strong economy to the world. And yet, we continue to travel the globe. We continue to posture, a stage of posturing, you know, telling the world that we are okay and that we are the big brother of the Pacific. I think that's a total uh, uh, pretense uh, on the part of our country by our leaders. The president expressed that the ordinary people are hit hard with every decision made from the top of the channel, as the decision makers themselves are saved to some extent from the struggles due to their leadership privileges. The society calls on the government to stop the expensive travels, globe trotting, and grandstanding and focus on the real issues of the country, a concern that seems to be shared by the majority. Natasha Voy National, MTV News. To have an effective democratic process and structure, quality leadership is needed, hence the importance of leadership code. President of the PNG Catholic Professional Society, Paul Harignan, says that this code has been undermined as it is treated as a criminal code. A leadership code is a code to regulate the conduct of persons holding public office. Any breach of the leadership code by the persons concerned is handled by the leadership tribunal. Mr. Herricknan expressed that lately, the leadership tribunal has been treated as criminal courts where leaders behaving dishonorably are quick to invoke the right to be innocent until proven guilty. Uh, leadership court, the thing about leadership court is that it's not a criminal court where you have to uh, have the challenge of finding evidence to prosecute them. It's a leadership code. Basically, it regulates the moral conduct of a leader. If you are seen publicly getting drunk and swearing and doing, you know, that's enough to hold you for leadership. And that's enough to make the leader resign. But a lot of our leaders you know, tend to just escape. And they're treating the leadership code as a criminal code. He added that it does not help when the Ombudsman Commission responsible for enforcing the leadership code seems ineffective in forcing moral conduct or misconduct of leaders. He said that disgraced leaders do not require so much evidence to step down or resign from office when found committing a leadership offence. Saying that I'm innocent, you take me to court, take me to the tribunal and prove your case. It's not about proving cases. This is about a public disgrace, a public misconduct, a public scandal, 
of a leader by word or deed, even if you, you are in a position, if you are a minister and you are overseas and you say something that is not right, that amounts to a misconduct. Now, if it amounts to a misconduct, the right thing to do in many jurisdictions is you resign. You don't have to wait for evidence. Natasha Voy National, MTV News. The Road Traffic Authority and the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary has joined forces to carry out this festive season's operation, which will begin tomorrow, 15th of November 2023. NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sika and Road Traffic Authority CEO Nelson Terema officiated the operations today in the presence of RTA and RPNGC officers. About 100 road traffic officers and NCD traffic police will be conducting vehicle checks for this festive season. This is to minimize the access of unworthy vehicles on the road. Road Traffic Authority CEO Nelson Terema emphasized on this. We are here to make sure that our citizens are safe on our roads in the city during the festive period because during the festive period, we normally encounter a lot of road accidents happening. So this time around, we, our presence will be on the road to minimize this and also get rid of all these unworthy vehicles currently on the road. This is an opportunity for us to take advantage of the situation and at the same time to lock all these unworthy vehicles. The NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sika appealed to the community to cooperate with the road traffic officers and road police officers to ensure operations are carried out smoothly. There will be roadblocks be conducted, vehicles will be checked probably thoroughly, inside interior and exterior as well. That is both private company vehicles or public vehicles. Most PMBs and taxis we running with, it's a warning to them now, who are running around with illegal, with white plates, that is illegal, deemed illegal. And they must take heed now, warning now that we will not tolerate that. To really go down and deal with, the, to make our people safe, the pedestrians, everyone in the city. And no one else will do it. When it's us, we're going to do it. But at the same time, we will appeal to the community to be responsible and cooperate and submit to rule of law. So rule of law is diminishing, diminishing in every sector in the community. But in the space of where we're trying to ensure that the, every citizen's lives are protected and safeguarded in terms of traffic laws, and it, we need to enforce that. The festive season operations will commence tomorrow and will be carried out for the next seven weeks. Meanwhile, Road Traffic Authority CEO Nelson Terema has assured the general public in the National Capital District that, ro that road traffic officers will take responsibility and conduct themselves accordingly when conducting the festive season vehicle checkups that commences tomorrow. With vehicle checks commencing tomorrow till the next seven weeks, Road traffic officers will play a vital role in ensuring only roadworthy vehicles operate in the city. With that, CEO for Road Traffic Authority Nelson Terema urged the officers to conduct themselves well. Our performance and our behavior, our conduct on the road must be at that standard. Two to ICs and the management enforcement making sure that all TOs must be properly ready to come to work. No drinking and coming to work, no half uniform. This sort of thing you will need to, you know, send them or mark them absent, and we will deal with those officers getting drunk and coming to work. Terema ensured the general public in the nation's capital that there will be no misconduct of officers. And if they go out of their line of duties, that's an end if they are caught. But sometimes our supervisors might not be on the road. That's why I'm appealing to the general public. If there is any bribery or misconduct by our officers, 
they need to report the matter to the management so that we have to discipline these officers accordingly. And City Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sica edged the man in blue to uphold the rule of law in their daily operations. Matsub stated that police operations for the festive season will be conducted. He gave his statement today in Port Mosby. And City Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sica gave an overview on the rising crime rates in the city. So in the midst of what is happening in the city, as we've seen uh, in the city, for the past nine months or ten months up until from the reports that have been uh, shown to us, especially from the traffic records, the reports of minor to uh, major crimes are very, very high. Major, uh, major uh, incidents like fatal accidents. It's reported, it's alarming to see that every day there's a minor crime to do a fatal accident in the city. So what's happening in the city right now is people are careless, irresponsible behavior and attitude of people. We are trying to deal with human beings, trying to deal with human beings, but human beings cannot respect human beings as well. And that is the current status quo in NCD in Port Mosby right now. An effort to toughen up police operations for the coming festive season is underway, as explained by the city police boss. I will also have a, a major operation from operation order already been prepared for the general police operations to cover the Christmas and New Year period as well. And you will be looking at the more than 500 policemen. So we're going to flood the city, spread everybody across the city to, to make sure that we all work together. And I'm making this awareness now to make sure that police and everyone of us here in authority will make sure that we do not leave any room for people who will try to uh, abuse the processes or the laws in here. And it is our responsibility to make sure that we make every effort to deal with any issue, any circumstances that arises in the city. In a show of bright colors, the APEC House foyer came alive yesterday evening. During the official launching of two vehicles from Great Wall Motors and distributing partner Boroco Motors. Boroco Motors has yet again launched two more vehicles in the Great Wall fleet, introducing the Haval H6 SUV and the Poya pickup truck. Great Wall Motors, a global renowned technology company whose main focus of business includes automobile and deals with the parts design, research and development of innovative automotive, production and sales. Its vehicle brands include Haval, Way, Aura, Tank GWM pickups and recently the Haval H6 SUV and Poya pickup truck. Principal dealer with Boroco Motors, Tony Barlow, gave some of the specs on the Haval H6 SUV and the Poya pickup truck. When you're talking about vehicles, everybody has similar specifications and, and their vehicles perform in a, in a similar way. Great Wall Motors, as I just explained, is very advanced in technology and very affordable in pricing. Pakashi, the vice president of Great Wall Motors, in a video message, expressed his enthusiasm towards Great Wall Motors' unprecedented advancement into the Papua New Guinean market. Barlow also said that both the vehicles are made for the harsh Papua New Guinean terrain and assured any interested customer of Boroko Motors' backup service and genuine spare parts distributors throughout the country. In terms of warranty, we have a three-year, 100 thousand kilometre warranty and we have a service network across the country where people can bring their cars in and get servicing done quickly, promptly by trained technicians that all know how to go about servicing these vehicles to get the cars out so motoring is uninterrupted. Invited guests, clients and partners were given the ultimate first impression of the two vehicles by selected employees from Boroco Motors as they answered questions about the two makes and models. The two newly launched vehicles will be exclusively distributed by Boroco Motors throughout the country. 
The Haval H6 SUV is priced at 119,000 kina, while the Poya pickup truck at 136,000 kina. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The Department of Justice and Attorney General commissioned a review of all national ocean policies legislation and policies in relation to the use and management of PNG's oceans today at the Airways Hotel in Port Mosby. The National Ocean Policy highlights traditional knowledge and practices as one of the important aspects of its policy development. Many PNG communities see oceans as part of their livelihood and traditional knowledge and practices were used to help the maritime life be rich and diverse for many decades. I grew up um, seeing the ocean, the reefs, teeming with all sorts of life, seeing the corals, um, so the multitude of colors, um, seeing people going out to sea and harvesting and coming back with, with catches that, were, that could feed an old community. I no longer witness that today. The Pacific Solutions for a Healthy Blue Pacific Continent, Integrated Ocean Management, is a program that supports the PNG and other Pacific Island nations to provide solutions to save the Pacific Ocean. One of the major components is integrating traditional knowledge, culture, and wisdom, which are guiding the national ocean policy in this aspect. Under the national ocean policy, we are uh, encouraging or we promote the idea of traditional knowledge. Can we use our traditional knowledge to help manage our modern resources? What worked in the past? How can it work today? PNG being the first Pacific Island nation to have NOP implementation in the process has attracted interested environment and ocean specialists and scientists to be part of the policy review and implementation. It's really important from a global biodiversity perspective, but also important to local Papua New Guineans for food security and, cultural, and, for, and for culture. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Meanwhile, the review held today is the first phase of the National Oceans Policy Implementation Process. The workshop was a way of raising awareness on the Pacific Solution Integrated Ocean Management and to progress national discussion on the country's ocean management and governance. PSIOM is a program that supports Pacific Island nations and their territories in implementing their ocean policies by providing solutions to existing challenges like climate change. In that uh, ocean space, Given the limited, uh, limited resources that we have, not only in terms of the uh, living natural resources, but also in terms of human capacity, in terms of resources that we need tools to enforce our laws, how do we manage the oceans in that, in that limited space? The successful outcome of the review will be a step forward to implementing the National Oceans Policy. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Commencing early 2024, about 120,000 public servants proper will contribute a premium amount of 2.7% of gross salary for single or 5.7% of gross salary for family to the Public Service Insurance Board of Trustee. 
This was revealed by the Deputy Secretary, Policy and Reforms, with the Department of Personal Management, Alison Kalimit, at the DPM Reforms Workshop, Southern Region, in Port Mosby today. Public servants across the country have been urged to collaborate to implement this national medical and life insurance policy. According to Mr. Kalimet, ensuring a health and life is an important element of a workforce. However, the state does not have a nationally owned medical and life insurance scheme for its employees. Mr. Kalimet stated that the reference is made to previous NEC decision in 2005, which never got off the ground until recent directions from the Marape Basil government. The department. Uh, is uh, uh, modernizing the terms and conditions of employment and introducing this life and medical insurance. It is very important that since independence, public servants have been risking their lives working and they have not uh, been uh, medically, medically insured. So a lot of them have been dying from preventable diseases and uh, it's uh, been very difficult for our public servants, especially at the district and the uh, district and the local government where they cannot afford for those expensive medical bills. The life and health insurance covers subsidy of 75 kina per fortnight and had already been awarded to PNG Nurses Association. PNG Health support workers and MLTP to cover its members. It was awarded based on the current government directives on food to cover medical insurance for all employees in the public sector. Under this insurance policy, there will be financial security for all public servants after serving the state. If a public servant resigns, a full contributions shall be repaid to the public servant. During employment, medical expenses will be fully paid for by the Public Service Insurance Board of Trustee. Furthermore, once the policy operates or with effect as of mid-2024, departments and agencies do not have to pay for funeral and repatriation expenses for those public servants who come from other parts of PNG. Those serving in the public service have been urged to collaborate to implement this important policy. All our public servants, on behalf of the Secretary for the Department of Personal Management, Ms. Thais Ansan, we need your support. Uh, without uh, your support, we cannot implement this uh, important government reform agenda. So work with us, and this is for the interest of all our public servants, to ensure that they are insured and uh, they can improve their productivity, productivity and they don't have to worry about their health. Insurance will take uh, care of them. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Deputy Secretary for Policy and Reforms under the Department of Personal Management, Alison Kalimit, has revealed that with the insurance and life policy, they have engaged a state solicitor to draft a new act of parliament, the New Care Act, that will guide the new public service New Care Association. This was revealed during the DPM Reforms Workshop, Southern Region, held in Port Mosby today. With the announcement of the national health and insurance policy for the employees of the state, the establishment of the registered association pursuant to the IPA Act with the proposed name, Public Service New Care Association is necessary. According to the Deputy Secretary, the insurance policy and funds shall be managed by the Board of Trustees, to be called the Public Service Insurance Board of Trustees. The board shall be served by Public Service New Care Association headed by a CEO. He further stated that the Board of Trustees is not subjected to any political or public service directions. It shall operate independently to serve the interest of public service insurance policy management and highlighted that an act has been drafted by a state solicitor and will be presented to the parliament soon for rectification. Uh, draft a new care act, new care act, uh, while we operationalize uh, this insurance under the public service new care. But currently, we, uh, we should be uh, drafting the new care act also. So already, just want to inform our public servants that uh, 
uh, we are working closely with the state solicitor, one of the lowest uh, million gains, to work with the uh, work with the, the department uh, to draft the, this new care act. So we are looking at uh, next year to. Uh, put this bill through parliament and if the parliament uh, passes that bill it becomes an act and that will be the act that will uh, will govern the operations of the uh, uh, public service nuclear association the association will initially start up in the nation's capital and then extend and open up offices in all other provinces it is anticipated that the association shall have over 300 positions or staff once it is fully established and operating in all other provinces. Two board meetings have been conducted. First a board meeting held on the 29th of March and the second on the 4th of October this year. CEO has been appointed by the board on its second meeting. The CEO will be responsible for managing and administering the insurance policy and its fund. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Many people in Simbu, Jiwaka, Western Highlands and Anga Province living with eyesight complications now have the opportunity to receive medical assistance from an eye outreach program being carried out at Migendi in the Karawagi district in Simbu Province. In service starting yesterday, the eye outreach program, coordinated by Kalan Services in Migendi, is expected to continue on till Saturday this week. The first day saw 400 plus patients lined up to be served. Team leader for Eastern Highlands Eye Unit, Mr. Damien Sungu, expressed that there are many people suffering from eyesight complications in the country and many times do not have access to and cannot even afford the medical assistance they need. Upon his observation, patients had come from far as Western Highlands and Jiwaka and had to sleep in line on open air to wait to be served. Mr. Sungu stressed that it will be better if government leaders or MPs intervene to assist and support such programs in the LLG or the district. He also made mention that PNG has limited eye doctors in the country. The services provided by the program include optimists, doing vision testing, eye exam and diagnose eye disease by prescribing the medicine for treatment, while ophthalmologists also diagnose and treat the eye disease, do eye surgery and provide routine vision care. The program also does prescribing glasses and contact lenses for vision correction. The network of Cullen Services is the largest provider of services to children and adults with disabilities in Papua New Guinea. Natasha Voy National, MTV News. And now looking at the Nesfund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2685 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, Yukina was buying 0.2610 US dollars, 0.4069 Australian dollars, 0.2364 Euro, 39.28 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher, copra closed higher, palm oil closed higher, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed higher. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher, the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. 123 Team PNG athletes and officials left the country this week for the 2023 Pacific Games in Honiara, Solomon Island. The other group of athletes and officials will depart tomorrow.
Now, a total of 125 elite athletes, including federations officials from various sporting codes, left Papua New Guinea for Solomon Islands on Monday, with the final team of PNG athletes or Team PNG contingent to depart tomorrow for Honiara come tomorrow morning. Now, the 2023 Pacific Games will see the opening ceremony take place on the 19th of this month, followed by the kicking off of the competition itself on the 20th of November. Now, in terms of PNG's relationship with the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea government has released a number of police personnel to help with the security operations during the 2023 Pacific Games. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. Acid Storm Kickboxing Club will host its three fights next month in Port Mosby. President Nelson Sampson says he is looking forward to see the young fighters compete and show their talents. Now training three days a week here at the Se John Guy Stadium are young boys and girls in the code of kickboxing. Now, President Nelson Sampson, who has been working tirelessly alongside this young kickboxing enthusiast, says their first bout will be in December, which is next month. Now, they are aiming to host the event on the 25th of December, which is Christmas Day. Now, they are calling for corporate houses to also come forward and support the young boys and girls to host their first bout uh, this year. Now, Nelson also says that he is preparing for his international bout, where he is supposed to attend an invitational tournament in Sydney, Australia in February, but says he has no funds to support himself and therefore wants corporate houses to come forward and support him to make this trip possible come February next year. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, Port Mosby City mostly fine, Daru fine, Kerama partly cloudy, Alotau partly cloudy with a shower or two, Popondeta a shower or two. In the Momase region, Lay City, Medang and Wewek, few showers and drizzles, Vanimo rain showers. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau partly cloudy, Kaveng mostly fine, Kokopo and Rabaul partly cloudy with chances of a shower or two, Kimbe partly cloudy with chances of a shower or two, Buka mostly fine. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, rain showers and possible th thunderstorms, then morning, pat morning fog patches, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, few showers and possible thunderstorms, then morning fog. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Tuesday, the 14th of November 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing, good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG.